A user reports that Windows 11 system cannot access a shared folder on a Linux server using SMB. The error indicates access denied. Given a scenario involving troubleshooting network shares, what is the most likely cause and resolution? SMB v1 disabled on the server, enable SMB v2 or higher on the Linux server, missing NTFS permissions, apply correct share permissions on the Linux server, firewall blocking SMB ports, open port 445 and 139 on the client, incompatible Samba configuration, reconfigure smb.conf with guest access, or incorrect SMB credentials, verify and update credentials in Windows Credential Manager. Which one would be the correct answer here? And here the correct answer and most obvious is that incorrect SMB credentials, verify and update credentials in Windows Credential Manager. As access denied typically indicates incorrect credentials, updating them in Windows Credential Manager Manager, sorry guys, resolves the issue. SMB v1 is depreciated and unlikely NTFS permissions don't apply to Linux. Firewall issues would show different errors and guest access is less secure and not the primary cause. A technician is tasked with the enabling BitLocker on Windows 10 Pro system without a TM TPM chip. Given a scenario involving securing operating systems, what is the most secure method to enable BitLocker? Configure BitLocker with startup key on a USB drive. Enable BitLocker using password without TPM. Install a TPM module to support BitLocker encryption. Use EFS instead of BitLocker for non-TPM systems or modify group policy to bypass DPM requirements and use a PIN. Which one would be the correct answer here? And here the correct answer is that we would need to configure BitLocker with a startup key on USB drive. As without a TPM, BitLocker requires an external startup key, e.g. on a USB drive, for a secure encryption, as it ensures physical possession for unlocking. A password alone is less secure, installing a TPM is unnecessary, EFS is file based and not equivalent, and the pin via group policy is less secure than a USB key. A Linux server running CentOS 9 stream experiences high CPU usage due to a runway process. Given scenario involving Linux troubleshooting, which command provides the most detailed real-time information to identify and terminate the process? Use top to monitor processes and press key to kill the process. Execute htop to view processes and select the process to terminate. Run PS aux, dash, grab to locate the process and use kill dash 9. Use system monitor to analyze and stop the process. Run ISOF to find the process and terminate it with P kill. Which one would be the correct answer here? And here the correct answer is to use or to execute htop to view process and select the process to terminate. As htop provides an interactive, detailed view process with the CPU usage and allows termination via menu, making it ideal for this scenario. And top is less user-friendly, PS requires additional steps, system monitor is GUI-based or graphical user interface-based and non-standard on servers, and ISOF is for file handles, not CPU usage. An administrator needs to automate the backup process on a macOS Ventura system using Time Machine to an NFS share. Given a scenario involving a macOS configurations, what is the correct approach to ensure compatibility? Mount the NFS share and select it directly in Time Machine preferences. Convert the NFS share to AFP for native Time Machine support. Use rsync instead of Time Machine to NFS compatibility. 
configure time machine to use the NFS share via custom sparse bundle, enable SMB on the NFS server and configure time machine to use it. So, which is the correct answer here? And here the correct answer would be to configure time machine to use the NFS share via custom sparse bundle. As Time Machine supports NFS shares, but they require a sparse bundle image, image for compatibility created manually and mounted before selection. Direct NFS selection isn't supported, AFP is depreciated, RSync bypasses Time Machine, and SMB is less reliable for this purpose. A Windows 11 system fails to boot after driver update, displaying a BSOD or blue screen of this with a critical process died error. Given a scenario involving troubleshooting operating systems, what is the best initial step to resolve this? Run start to prepare from the Windows recovery environment. Rebuild the BCD using BC edit in the command prompt. Perform a system restore to a point before the update. Reset the PC while keeping files intact. Boot into safe mode and roll back the driver using device manager. So, which one would be the correct answer here? And here the correct answer is to boot into safe mode and roll back the driver using device manager. As a driver related BSOD or blue screen of death is the best addressed by booting into safe mode, which loads minimal drivers and rolling back to the problematic driver. This is the least invasive initial step. Startup prepare may not address the driver issue. BCD rebuilding is irrelevant. System restore is a broader fix and resetting the PC risks a data loss. A technician is configuring a Linux workstation with Ubuntu 24.04 to restrict SSH access to a specific user group. Given a scenario involving securing a Linux-based operating system, what is the most secure and efficient method to achieve this? Modify etc SSH for I actually will not be reading most of these commands. Have a look at this question, answer options. Decide or select one answer which you think is correct. So which one is the correct answer? And correct answer here is to actually the first one. Modify etc SSH SSHD underscore config with allow groups directive. Restart the SSH service. As the allow groups directive in command is the most secure and efficient way to restrict SSH access to a specific group, followed by restarting the SSH services, e.g. system CTL restart SSHD. The, others, the other options are less effective, etc. passwd pass password doesn't control SSH access, IP tables cannot filter by group, and PAM is overly complex for this and cron jobs are inefficient and reactive. A user reports that a Windows 10 system fails to apply group policy objects GPOs after a recent domain join. The GP result forward slash r command shows no policies applied. Given a scenario involving configuring and securing operating systems, what is the most likely cause and resolution? GPO inheritance blocked. Resolve by enforcing the GPO at the domain level. Missing RSOP data. Resolve by running GP update forward slash force to refresh policies. Incorrect DNS configuration, resolve by setting the domain controllers as the primary DNS server. User account permissions issue, resolve by adding the user to the domain admins group. Or firewall blocking SMB, resolve by enabling file and printer sharing rules. 
which one would be the correct answer and the correct answer here is incorrect dns configuration and resolve by setting the domain controller as the primary dns server as gpus rely on dns to locate domain controllers if the client's dns is misconfigured or it cannot resolve the domain controller preventing gpu application setting the domain controller as the primary dns resolves this issue the other options are plausible but incorrect a company is deploying windows 11 enterprise v0 touch deployment in a hybrid environment with legacy hardware the process fails on some machines due to boot method incompatibilities. Given a scenario involving OS installations, what is the most probable cause and resolution? Missing TPM 2.0, resolved by using repair installation with bypass checks. Incompatible partition scheme, resolved by converting MBR to GPT via disk part. Network boot PXE failure resolved by fallback to external hot swappable drives. Hardware compatibility list commission, oh, sorry, omission resolved by updating the deployment image. Or legacy BIOS mode conflicts resolved by enabling UEFI in firmware settings. So which one is the correct answer? And here's the correct answer is legacy BIOS mode conflicts as uh, windows 11 requires uefi for zero touch deployment due to its secure boot and tpm 2.0 requirements legacy bios mode on older hardware causes boot failures which can be resolved by enabling uefi in firmware the second option is plausible but is less likely and as a TPM issues would typically cause different errors, the third option is incorrect as MBR to GPT conversion is secondary to UEFI. And, the, uh, and the, the fourth and fifth options misattribute the issue to network or image problems which are less relevant here. During a system audit, an IT administrator notices that a Linux server using XFS for its primary file system experiences performance degradation under heavy write loads compared to X4. Given various file system types and their purposes, what advanced features of XFS might be contributing to this and how could it be mitigated? XFS journaling overhead mitigate by switching to RFEFS for better redundancy, XFS lack of snapshots, mitigate by implementing BTRFs for volume management, XFS metadata checksum, mitigate by disabling them via MKFS.XFS options, XFS allocation group structure, mitigate by optimizing with larger stripe sizes or XFS external based allocation mitigate by defragmenting regularly with XFS underscore FSR which is the correct answer here and here's the correct answer is XFS allocation group structure mitigate by optimizing with larger stripe sizes as XFS uses allocation group for parallel input output but misalignment with hardware e.g. RAID stripes can be degrade performance under heavy writes. Mitigation involves tuning stripe size during formatting or mounting options. Next question, a technician is troubleshooting a workstation that fails to mount on an external drive formatted with APFS after connecting to a Windows 11 Pro system. The drive was previously used on a macOS device. Considering a file system compatibility concerns between operating systems, what is the most likely reason for this issue? Windows natively supports APFS but only in read-only mode without updates. APFS requires third-party driver on Windows for read-write access. APFS is incompatible with Windows due to vendor lifecycle limitations on cross-operating system support. 
the driver's IPFS partition uses encryption that conflicts with Windows NTFS drivers or Windows requires performing IPFS to XFAT for interoperability with macOS file systems. So which one is the correct answer? And the correct answer here is that APFS is incompatible with Windows due to vendor life cycle limitation on cross op Actually, I was wrong here, as you can see guys, so APFS requires third party driver on Windows for a read-write access. So, yes guys, another practice test from Skilldesk Pro and as you asked for the very heavy one so this is one of the heaviest or hardest ones in and it is based on operating systems and like I mentioned in previous videos guys there will be not be so many questions about Linux and so many questions about a Mac OS operating system as Comte Core 2 practice as Comte Core 2 is generally oriented on Windows operating system. I will search for more other operating system practice tests here on Skilltest Pro and will find some which is oriented only on Windows and will create a video soon. So if you find if you found this video useful, leave a like, share this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and see you in the next one.